Almost everyone has flown a kite at some time in their life. You may not have had good success every time and blame the bad luck entirely on the wind or your particular kite. With some basic kite theory, you should have more successful flying sessions. Flying a kite can be much more challenging than one might imagine. This is because of variances in the wind and how a kite reacts to the ever-changing wind. It can be constantly changing speed or direction. The design and the adjustments you have made to your kite determine how the kite will react to the wind. Some kites will fly better in strong winds, but will come quickly to the ground when the wind slides. Other kites that are lighter will stay aloft in light wind, but when the wind gets stronger will start looping crazy until they hit the ground. This soft kite has nothing to break in a crash, but it takes a strong wind to keep the small kite up, especially when it has to lift several tails which are needed to keep it stable in the wind. How does a kite fly? Like an airplane, except the string holds the kite stationary and the wind blows across the flying surfaces, creating lift. The stringless wonder looks like a kite, but it flies like an airplane, powered by a rubber band motor. The power flyer is a similar design. The Wright brothers flew man-carrying gliders as kites also. Some kites can be steered by using more than one string. This kite uses two strings for steering, and this kite uses four strings for steering. In this section of the video, I will go through the steps of building a simple diamond kite. We start with the spine of the kite, we add a crossbar creating a joint from string and glue. String is glued around the ends of the dowels to give something to tape the plastic to. The plastic is used for covering. A bridle is added for the flight line to be attached to. And then we add a plastic tail. These are the materials and tools you will need to build your kite. Also, you will need a saw with fine teeth. If you are building your kite in a hurry, I would suggest using a low temperature hot glue gun, not the high temperature gun. Fishing swivels work well for attaching the flight line to the bridle and for attaching tails. Surveyor's pegging tape works well for tails. Remove the barcode sticker from one of the dowels. This will be the 36 inch long vertical spine of the kite. Mark the other dowel with a sticker at 30 inches. Now cut that dowel at the 30 inch mark. Mark the 30 inch dowel at 15 inches. Mark the 36 inch dowel at 8 inches from one end. Match up the two marks and tie a knot in a string to pull together. Pull the knot tight. Now crisscross the string between the two dowels to bind them together. Next you will cover this joint with glue. Next put a small glob of hot glue on the end of each dowel Run a string across that and let it dry for 30 seconds. Then tighten the string to the next dowel end and glue on that. Covering the kite, I use 13 gallon tall kitchen bags which are white in color and can be decorated with permanent marker. Find the open end of the bag. Cut along one side at the fold. Cut along the bottom edge at the fold. 
Unfold the plastic and trace around the kite with a three quarter inch border. Before cutting the plastic, this is a good time to decorate the kite with permanent markers. Note the plastic does not cover the ends of the dolls. The plastic overlap is folded over the string and taped with invisible tape. Use plenty of tape and tape down all of the overlap. Poke a hole in the plastic for the bridle 15 inches below the spar joint. You'll poke another hole in the upper end of the kite 4 inches above the spar joint. A string will go between the two attachment points. Allow plenty of slack so that you can tie two loops in the string for attachment to the flying line. Attach the plastic tail to your kite. I used a fishing swivel attached to the bottom of the kite and a paper clip tied to the plastic tail. For more stability, we'll tie a string from one end of the crossbar to the other. Your kite is ready to fly. Have fun and be safe. When to fly your kite. If your kite is fairly light, a steady wind of around 8 to 12 miles an hour should be good. Gusty, variable wind makes kite flying difficult. Keep your kite away from trees. And especially keep your kite away from power lines. The wind is stronger and steadier as you get higher from the ground. What does this tell you about flying your kite? What is your goal? Your goal is to work your kite up to a higher altitude. This shark kite flew all day long at a high altitude. For the kite handle, use what you can afford. One with a reel and a crank works best. When you feel the kite pulling, the line tight, this is when you let out line. Let out some line, stop letting out line, and observe the kite again. If it continues to pull hard, let out more line. If the kite is not pulling hard, wait for the wind to pick up, or try walking backwards. This is what makes kite flying fun, the constant feedback you get from observing the kite and feeling the pull on the line. There are two basic adjustments that you make on your diamond kite. The attachment point of the bridle moving it up and down or changing the length of the tail depending on wind conditions. This kite I purchased at the drugstore for a dollar. The attachment point for the flying line to the bridle was too high the way the kite came set up, resulting in looping. Lowering the attachment point resulted in a stable flying kite. For stronger wind, a longer tail will also help with the looping problem. Using the fishing swivel at the bottom of the kite, it is easy to switch tails. For a class, I created two tails. The pink tail was 10 feet long, and the orange tail was 15 feet long. If the wind is not real strong, the longer tail is extra weight. Thank you.